Hello, everyone, and welcome to our next lecture series on optimization-based system and parameter identification. In order to start this lecture series, I would like to discuss a very simple identification problem which we already have seen in a couple of videos back, which was a linear system in a discrete time where we wanted to identify these known parameters A and B, which we have already did successfully, or let's say partially successfully, using ordinary least squares. And for that, I would just give you a brief reminder. Um, so from this notebook, which you um, have already seen before, and the key takeaway message of this um, identification problem, when we apply ordinary least squares to this dynamic system that all our best linear unbiased estimator properties are going down the uh, toilet pipe if we apply it to a dynamic system. And we could also see that here in our example because we get basically biased parameter estimates. So we have distinct deviations between our estimated and our true parameters when we apply ordinary least squares to that dynamic system and when we compare the identified model in uh, this screenshot here against the real data or the real noisy data considering some measurement noise new here, we can see that also this estimate or this simulation of the identified model is not ideal. So therefore, we need to open up a new chapter and find alternative solutions on how to identify parameters and then later on also the entire model without relying on certain structures based not only on ordinary least squares, but utilizing the optimization techniques which we have introduced in the previous videos. Therefore, what I'm going to do now is basically I will formalize an optimization problem. So we want to minimize using some parameters, W from the real numbers up to Q of them. And we want to minimize the cost function, capital L of W is equal to the sum of K being one to capital M of Y of K minus Y hat of K in some cost function term L. This cost function could be, for example, the quadratic Euclidean distance between our measurement outputs y and our estimated outputs y hat using a model of this system. And speaking of that model, of course, that would be somehow our boundary condition. So subject to a model x hat of k plus 1 is equal to f x hat of k, u, k, and w, and of course y hat of k as a function of g, x hat of k, u of k, and some parameters, w again, right? So what we have basically now combined is are the two basic elements of the previous lecture series. That is, we have a definition of our model. Here I use a discrete time notation. However, we will also see in the future that that can be a continuous time notation. And we do some optimization approach, for example, using here the squared Euclidean distance between measurements and modeled system outputs. Okay, so we're basically combining now optimization and dynamic modeling tools. And in order to solve this optimization procedure, what we now do is we take our model and we take an optimizer, so one of the solvers, which we have introduced, like the stochastic gradient descent, for example, or later in this video we, we will see the Newton approach, and the model will provide some estimates 
y hat. And the optimizer will take these estimates and will basically propose a new parameter set w to the model. And with this new parameter set w, we will again get a new estimate set of the outputs and so on until this optimization loop eventually converges. And we will call this in the following the prediction error method or short M because we are going to try to minimize this prediction error here using a model uh, which delivers as this prediction and an optimizer. So we therefore are going to basically uh, take our example which we had here and we will redo this example not only with ordinary least squares but we're going to plug in a distinct solver, a distinct optimizer which tries to find the best parameter set w such that this loss function is going to be minimized. Therefore, let's go back to our notebook and let's do exactly what we have sketched here with the prediction error method. So first what we need of course is a cost function. So that's what we're going to see here in this cell. So if we define a function cost which takes some arbitrary parameters w, inputs u and outputs y, and these are let's say the real inputs and outputs in terms of our data which we are going to utilize in order to compare our model against. And then what's happening here inside that function is basically we take these uh, parameters especially, we form a model of this simple linear model here which uh, renders us a suitable example. And then using the predicted outputs of this model, so without the noise here, we are going to compare the predicted states x against the outputs y which we have obtained from some measurement data. So in our case, of course, it's artificial data, synthetic data, but of course that would also work with normal data which we get from real world experiments. And what we basically calculate here the, uh, is the Euclidean, uh, the sum of the Euclidean distances between the estimate outputs and the data outputs. Okay, so this is our cost function here. Uh, which also includes a model, so that's basically our uh, official problem definition, cost function, model, perfect. And now we need to plug in an optimization solver to uh, solve this problem. And what I've used here in this notebook is a so-called optim.jl package. It's one of the standard packages for numerical optimization. And this package holds many of the algorithms which we have introduced in the previous lecture, videos like gradient descent, or Newton, which I'm going to use here. So what's happening in the cell is quite straightforward. So we utilize the optimize command and say, okay, optimize command, please let's take the cost function and optimize that with respect to the parameters w. So that also means that the inputs u and y are just additional arguments which we parsed into the function in order to calculate here the um, differences. As a starting point for the optimization for the parameters A and B, we just take some arbitrary input uh, initial guesses, which are zero, zero, and here we take the Newton method in order to solve that problem. When we then let the problem run, we basically get here a uh, standard out, out of the function call, and what we can see here, the solver is basically giving us a feedback that it has terminated successfully, so obviously it has find an optimum, and as we can see here, obviously the tolerances are quite good and also we just needed a couple of iterations. So that gives us a feeling that the Newton optimizer had been converged quite quickly in order to find the optimum parameter set in order to fit this model to the data. If we then plot the system response by the new fitted model, by the PEM model, the prediction error method against our true noisy measurement data. And especially 
since we have generated our data from just another model where we know the real parameters, we can now basically see that this direct optimization approach using PEM is able to retrieve the parameters without any bias for except some numerical uh, deviations due to the numerical optimization procedure. And also the model versus data plot looks now very promising and we do not see the systematic errors which we have seen in the ordinary least squares approach. Interestingly, if we also compare our cost function in the parameter space, uh, which is the last plot of this notebook, uh, what we have here is on the x-axis the parameter value for A, and on the b-axis we have the parameter value for B. And what we uh, have here in the middle is basically the ISO curves, so the cost contours of this quadratic cost function, right? So uh, the color purple basically means that here is the cost minimum, so in this area here in the middle, where we also have the true parameters in green, and colors towards uh, yellow, orange, and red basically means high costs, so that means some uh, deviations between our true model representation and the estimated model representation. And as we can see here from this plot, the PEM solution perfectly lays over the parameters which we obtained from the real model, which we wanted to identify. And here in red, the solution which we have obtained a couple of videos back using an ordinary least squares fit on a dynamical system, they have the systematic deviations, right? So they lead to much more higher costs because we have utilized this ordinary least squares approach, which we have derived for a static model, and we basically just throw it against the dynamical model, which led to this systematic errors, which we can here also see in the uh, cost plane uh, over the parameters. Okay, so I hope I could give you a rough first introduction about the prediction error methods, where we going to utilize optimization techniques to directly find the best model parameters and later on also the best model structures in order to find uh, a good representation of our data. Here in this video we have applied that only to a linear system, but we will also see in the follow-up uh, videos that we are able to utilize the pretty same technique also to arbitrary nonlinear techniques. So stay tuned and see you in the next video.